Hey everyone, so today we are going to discuss how to dissect and correctly label and also correct an arterial blood gas. So basically we're going to start talking about the steps in order to decide what's wrong, how far out of range is the blood gas, and what can we do to fix it. So one of the first things we need to do is decide is the blood gas acidotic or alkalotic. So if the pH is 7.35 to 7.45, we know that that is normal range. 7.4 is absolutely perfect. If it's below 7.35, then it is acidotic. And it is also out of the 7.35 to 7.45 range, which means it's uncompensated, okay, or non-compensated. And a lot of times this is caused by an increase in the PCO2 and or the low bicarb. And then if the um, pH is 7.45, we know that means it's alkalotic. If it's above 7.45, it's out of range of the 7.35 to 7.45. So we know that that means that it is non-compensated. And we, um, we know that that is caused by an increase in the bicarb or a low CO2. Maybe our patient's hyper, hyperventilating and blowing off too much PCO2 and that's causing an alkalotic state, okay? So as we decide if it's acidosis or alkalosis, if it's below 7.35, it's acidotic. If it's above 7.45, it's alkalotic. Then we need to decide about compensation if it's out of range, if it's outside that uh, 7.35 to 7.45, we know that means that it's non-compensated. So we need the body to kick in and bring it back to homeostasis and that normal pH range of 7.35 to 7.45. <clears throat> so, um, hold on one second. So the uh, respiratory acidosis or alkalosis occurs when the pH is abnormal because of a change in the PCO2. So you, for instance, if you have um, the emergency room uh, tonight at the local hospital and you have a 60 year old female come in in respiratory distress, if her pH is 7.30, then we know that that is acidotic because it's below 7.35 it's non-compensated because it's out, the pH is out of range from the normal 7.35 to 7.45. Um, her P PCO2 is 54, so that tells us that it's increased higher than it normally should be because normal pH range is 35 to 45. So the patient's actually breathing um, either too slow or too shallow or both and they're hypoventilating their PCO2 is 54 and um, so that's out of range from the, the 35 to 45 now if their PO2 is say 56 then we know that that is out of range from the normal 80 to 100 and that is decreased so that would give us a um, uh, hypoxemia um, so and then if their bicarb is 25 then you know that that's a normal range and the kidneys have not had time to kick in and produce more bicarb and so uh, it takes a little time it doesn't happen real fast and so um, there this is a non-compensated respiratory acidosis with hypoxemia or also known as acute ventilatory failure. So what do we do to fix that problem? Well, we are going to uh, have to ventilate this patient. 
Now, if we can uh, intervene now while the while the pH is greater than 7.26, then we will we would be able to use non-invasive positive pressure ventilation to increase ventilation and help that patient blow off that e excess PCO2 by increasing the ventilation of the alveoli and that would help bring that back into range. We could also add uh, some supplemental oxygen uh, into the mask in, via the, the blender or it, we may have to inline it according to what um, NPPV or BiPAP machine that we're using. We may have to inline the oxygen into the into the tubing, but either way we can add FiO2. So between the supplemental oxygen and um, increase in ventilation, we're going to correct this uh, blood gas uh, fairly quickly, quicker than uh, waiting on the bicarb to kick in and and waiting on uh, the body to do it uh, naturally. It's just unable to uh, keep up and maintain a, a perfect balance, which we know is um, termed um, homeostasis. So we want that pH to be 7.4 or at least within the range of 7.35 to 7.45. We want the PCO2 to back, be back between 35 and 45. We want the PO2 to be you know, 80, 80 to 100, um, definitely higher than, than in the 50s. And we want the bicarb um, to kick in, and our normal range for bi bicarb is 22 to 26, according to what reference material that you're using. Okay, so um, that is how to correct, how to, um, well, how to assess and correct a respiratory acidosis that's non-compensated. So if you have any questions, be sure and um, um, shoot me an email or a message. Come over if you've not already joined our uh, study group, uh, Respiratory Review, RRT, um, and Neonatal Pediatric um, Specialist Review. Uh, you're more than welcome. All are welcome to be there and we'll definitely um, learn a lot every day as we post and review and and we have some live games and uh, live updates so all right well thanks for listening have a great day and take super good care and maintain your own homeostasis